What's going on, Eurovoxers? Hör laget Hannah and Fawn. How are you guys? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks. <laughs> I'm fine. Thanks. Awesome. So today we're talking Melfest. Of course, this is one of the biggest national selections for all of the countries participating in Eurovision. And they've always got big shoes to fill when it comes to the artists that they're going to send because Sweden has such a big reputation at Eurovision. So it's down to 12 artists. One of them is going to be the winner. And let's talk about it. All right, so Hannah, you're our local Swede in this conversation. I want to know, how do you feel yeah. about your country's selection of songs overall? Um, I think overall they have been uh, pretty good. I've been pleasantly surprised by a lot of them. Um, and I also got to see uh, Melfest live during the semifinal three, uh, and it was amazing. Uh, so I wouldn't say there's a song I strongly dislike. Um, obviously, there are songs that are better, but uh, I mean, overall, I'm pretty proud, Swede, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you should be. Twana, I'm sure that you've got some favorites in this as well. Uh, your overall impressions? Overall, I think, like many years before, Sweden has got one of the best selections overall. Also, regarding the diversity, Sweden's selection is all, uh, always really diverse, which I love like there's songs like couple karaoke and then there's songs like talking in my sleep and boys with emotions which are, which are just so different which makes it a really fun selection to watch well let's let's get into these uh, i think that it would be totally necessary to start with the one that seems to be the big favorite this is of course daughter with her song bulletproof um, i'm gonna go to you first hannah um mm. what do you what do you think about what she's bringing this year uh, I think she's bringing something very cool, like the staging is unique and very cool. Uh, and also she, ha she has an amazing voice. Uh, you can recognize her voice, like you know it's her. And it's like, she's really, I think she's good. Um, I, I liked her the first time she was in Melfest, um, which was a few years ago. Um, mm -hmm. But she didn't go through that time, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm yeah, really well, glad she got the chance now. Well, it can only be one every year, right? So you're not always yeah. going to get the favorite <laughs> through because sometimes you have multiple favorites. Uh, it's fun. I know that yeah, this is a song that you like as well. Yes, I really like the song. I think the staging fits the song uh, well. I really love the staging. I really love her dress and how her dress is involved in the staging in a completely different way than other dresses are involved in some stagings, mm -hmm. like Estonia in 2018. Mm. And this song also is really current, and uh, I think it's just got the entire package and the most Eurovision potential. I, I have to agree with you. It feels like the best or the most well-rounded entry of all of them. I mean, I think there are certainly others that are big competitors, but it wouldn't surprise me because of the hype and because of what she's bringing with with uh, uh, her staging and her song, it wouldn't surprise me if this is the one that does win in the end. Um, I think the thing that is the real key to the success is the fact that this is 100% visually engaging from start to finish. Every image, whether it's just her lying down at the beginning to uh, the, the first laser that comes down from, from the ceiling to when she's flashing everyone with, I, I've heard people call them the laser booms. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all just so, so well done and it keeps you hooked. My only reservation is that musically, it just feels a little bit too conventional for pop music. Of course, that will make it work in some ways, but I think that if we're talking about looking into the future and how it would do at Eurovision, that could be a bit of a detriment, but I guess we'll have to see. Um, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, Mariette, I'm going to start with you, Tvon, because I know that this is a, a song that you like as well. Um, tell me how you're feeling about, what, what's the name of her song again? Uh, Shout, Shout It Out. out. Shout It Out, yeah. Out. Yes. Tell me. So Marietta has one, been one of my favorites every year she um, entered and uh, she was my winner in 2015 actually with her song Don't Stop Believing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't say she's my winner this year, but I will say she's in my top three definitely this year. Um, the song has a positive feel. It is in some way it's different from the other song she sent, but in some way it has the same feel. Like you know, it's a Mariette song, and in some way it's really contemporary, mm -hmm. which I also think it would do favor. And the staging is isn't too tacky. It is 
just a bit stripped back. It's just her with some cool effects and her guitar, mm -hmm. which I find a bit tacky at some points, but I think it's cool to see her in a different light there rather than have big staging um, and just focus on her song this year. Yeah, I, I have to agree about the, the guitar. It, it I, I, I kind of like what she was going for, but it, it seems to be the the one moment that kind of takes me out of it for a bit. But I don't think that it absolutely ruins it uh, either. Uh, Hannah, your thoughts on Mariette? Uh, yeah, so she was one of the ones I got to see live. Uh, uh -huh. And yes, and uh, I really liked it. Um, I really think um, <clears throat> the simple staging and everything, it really suits the song as well. Uh, and I mean, Mariette, she's always really good. Uh, okay. I also liked all her previous songs. Um, and yeah, I mean, I can understand like the guitar and everything, why people may be a bit like that was a bit out of place. Uh, but I think she did the song real well and is uh, like very her, I feel like. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and it's very simple and stripped back uh, in, in, yeah. in terms of staging with just a few lights, and it's all very effective. I think it yeah. kind of rivals what uh, Duncan Lawrence was doing last year in terms of keeping it about the light. Obviously a very different song, but uh, just thinking visually. Mm -hmm. uh, next, let's talk about Hannah Firm. Uh, her song Brave has gotten a lot of attention. She was one of the, one of the entries that went directly to the final. Um, Hannah, tell me about Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've uh, always been a fan of Hannah ever since she was in Idol. Um, I think she has an amazing voice. Um, I also really liked her performance uh, with Liamu last year uh, when she came. I think they came third place. And I think her song is good. It's definitely a more up-tempo pop, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I mean, there are some parts of the chorus when you can feel like She's mumbling a little bit. You don't hear the lyrics like that clear, mm -hmm. uh, but I still think it's a good song. Um, although I'm not 100% sure if it's gonna win per se, but I mean, it's still a really good song and definitely a contender, but mm -hmm. yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Exactly. I know that for some people, uh, they definitely prefer this to Daughter. Uh, Daughter, as we mentioned, is seems to be the uh, the bigger favorite of um, of a lot of the people that are in this selection. Um, where does Hannah land for you, Tvon? Um Also somewhere in my top three or top five. I can't see this. I can't see this winning, but I also can't. The staging is very visually appealing with the two screens and the smoke. The song has a great message and is also really contemporary and upbeat. Uh, the only part I don't like is the la di da -di part, oh, where she's okay. just not singing lyrics, <laughs> but just la di be whatever. I'm generally not a fan of those parts in songs. <laughs> oh. So I wish she would have um, done something different with that part of the song. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, I think she can do really well. It, it was funny uh, because of the way that Melfest releases the songs. First you get the lyrics, then you get a mm -hmm. snippet, and then you see the full thing. And it was kind of funny to see in the printed out lyrics, there was just a lot of la-di-da-di-da, la-di-da-di-da. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, uh, let's move on to another one who uh, is certainly a favorite for a lot of people in the Eurovision world uh, because she has gone to Eurovision before. This is Anna Bergendahl with the song Kingdom Come. Uh, Tvon, uh, this is this is one of your favorites as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think this might be my winner this year for Malfest. Mm -hmm. um, I think she deserves justice for her 2010 song. I uh, all, always love Anna Bergendahl songs. Uh, I think Kingdom Come, Come is better than Ashes to Ashes last year. It is. Uh, it also has the entire package. It has staging. It has great staging, and it has the great stage presence. And she's just always an amazing vocalist. So I think she can, maybe even win. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, Hannah, I want to get the mm. local perspective from you because obviously, mm. the, like uh, Anna's story is, I, like I don't want to say it's not troubled, but uh, she has the unfortunate burden of being the only, I believe, the only Swedish entry to not qualify uh, to the yeah. final at Eurovision, which might leave a bit of a mark and perhaps in perhaps in an mm. undeserved way. Um, mm. How do you feel about what she's bringing this year, and do you think that it it does? 
justice, as as uh, Tuan mentioned. Uh, I definitely agree with Tuan. That is uh, a definite contender for the win. Uh, uh, I think it's, the song is really good, uh, and also the staging was amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, I think another thing, just because she was the only one who didn't qualify, and also since it is exactly 10 years ago today, so, uh, of this year. So mm -hmm. it's kind of, I mean, it would be cool if she like won and like actually qualified and now 10 years later. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also, yeah, it is a bit like, yeah, nerve wracking. Yes, because, you know, it, that puts, puts a lot of pressure on her. Like, yeah, yeah, she was the only one who didn't qualify. And now she has a second chance. Like, will she qualify this time? It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. And I, I'm sure that some people think about the possibility of being, being then the artist that doesn't qualify twice. But I have to mm -hmm. say that this this song i mean i, I really did like uh, this is my life way back when mm -hmm. of course i learned about it well after that whole thing happened um but this is like this is how you do a comeback i think because her yeah. her presence on stage is just so commanding um i love the hook it's it's really uplifting it's i, I think i would put this as probably my second favorite out of um all of the songs in the final um the only thing that this is like such a minor thing the only thing that i don't like is the uh the wardrobe of the dancers it just feels a little bit too like uh you know pop music fan service let's have these guys bare chested and and all that i, I just don't i don't see how it fits uh but again it's such a little thing uh and and i i would be really happy if this was her year so the next artist that we're going to be talking about was actually the favorite going into the contest but then there was a bit of a surprise in that he didn't go direct to the final and he ended up in the second chance round of course he did win his duel in the second chance round uh we're of course talking about felix sandman and his song boys with emotions uh let's go to you first hannah what do you feel about this song um i have a bit mixed feelings um i <clears throat> obviously i actually really loved his uh 2018 song and he actually went to a second chance round that time as well and ended mm -hmm. up in second place in the final. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I like the message of his song. Uh, I think it's a really important message. Um, it's, um, and it's very contemporary as well. Uh, it's just not exactly maybe my kind of music. Uh, mm -hmm. And also the choreography <laughs> seems a bit awkward at times, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, he has a lot of fans. I know there's a lot of people who love this song. So I mm -hmm. definitely think he's still going to do very, very well, probably. Mm -hmm. It seems to be that he could still be in the running. Um, before I go to, go to Tvan, I, I want to pick up on some of the things that you said, because I, I feel quite strongly about this song because of the the message that it has, mm -hmm. at least the message that it tries to have, because I think it's it's really flashy. Staging is is certainly one of the most impressive out of all of them in terms of like having like a wow factor with the projections on his body and uh, the the camera work. I think is is done masterfully. The big miss for me is that this is a song about uh, toxic masculinity at the end of the day, and and the fact that boys have this stigma, men have this stigma where they're not allowed to be vulnerable. And vulnerability is really the key. And I don't see any vulnerability with this song that like, it, it, it has a really nice beat. Um, it's, it's enjoyable. It's something that I would dance to at the club, but then when you, you're, you know, looking fly and, and, you know, going up to the camera, doing this kind of thing, there, there's just such a, a disconnect that it, it feels disingenuous. Um, but anyway, that, that's how I feel about it. Tuan, what do you think about Felix Sandman's song? I completely agree with everything that Hannah said. I uh, quite liked his 2018 song and it was a deserved place for him in the final. But I'm just not a fan of the kind of music he's bringing this year. Um, the staging, though, was really good. It kind of gave me uh, the L.A. Ryan mixed with Benjamin Ingrosso music video uh, kind of uh, feel, mm -hmm. which works for sweden so i don't know if he's in it to win it but i know that he's gonna do really well yeah i think you're right and i think that's a pretty apt description it is it is kind of like uh benjamin and grosso meets ali ryan from germany who uh might be making an appearance this year at eurovision we don't know yet uh best of luck to her she does but anyway <laughs> 
back to Sweden and uh, talking about an artist who we're familiar we're familiar with, but because of Estonia last year. This is, of course, Victor Krohn, who is a, a, a Swede, but because he lives in Estonia, represented them last year. Um, and now he's he's come back with Troubled Waters. Uh, Tuan, tell me how you feel about his song. Of course, again, the staging is amazing. The song is also really contemporary again. It gives me the Victor Krohn vibes. It reminds me a bit of Storm, but it's also really different. Mm -hmm. It's uh, an easy song to listen to. And uh, I normally don't quite enjoy these types of songs, but I have to say I'm quite enjoying this one also because the staging is so good and his vocals also have improved a lot since uh, Tel Aviv, I have to say, I have to give him credits for that. Absolutely. I think that was the, the big concern, um, especially because when we heard the snippet of the song, it sounded even more challenging than Storm was. And with Storm, he was really kind of pushing the limits of his abilities. And as we saw, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But now it seems like he's made strides in his abilities. Um, Hannah, how would you feel about uh, Victor if he were to represent Sweden? Do you think he has a, a, a chance at least after representing Estonia? Mm, I don't know. Like, uh, it's a good song. Uh, very, like, <clears throat> it is what I do think a lot about Storm when I hear it. It's like a Storm 2.0. Um, mm. It's definitely, uh, and it's, I, always, I also think of like Avicii, like that kind of music. Uh, very radio friendly. Uh, I mean, he could do well. Uh, I don't think he's a contender to the win per se, uh, but that's just because I don't hear, you know, about Daughter and all the other artists, you hear quite a lot about them, but mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people are talking about Victor, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, it would be cool if, since he represented St Estonia last year, if he like <laughs> next year, he's just changing countries to his home country of Sweden. So that, I mean, that would be cool. <laughs> but, it would be yeah. it would be a really nice story for for that to be the case for him. Yeah. Um, but if it's not him, there's somebody else who could be doing a, a repeat representation at Eurovision. It's the Mamas. Uh, they they opened the first semifinal with their song "Move." Um, certainly very different to uh, the other songs in this selection, at least perhaps somewhat similar to the song that they brought with Jan Lundvik last year. Um, tell me, Hannah, how do you feel about the Mamas? Um, I think they're good. Um, I mean, they're vocally very good. Uh, and the staging, simple, but I think it worked really well with the song. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really a song you, you just want to get up and clap along and sing along to. Uh, it's definitely that kind of song, I feel like. Uh, um, it's, it is uh, similar to uh, Too Late for Love, obviously, like that gospel kind of feeling. Uh, mm -hmm. So you do kind of get the feeling of, well, you kind of miss something because you're obviously used to them singing, you know, with John Lundvik. So you kind of like, well, the, wait, there's like something missing. I mean, mm -hmm. I still think it's a really good song, though. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that work for you, Tvon? Do you do you feel like it's a it's a missing element to ha to not have uh, Jan Lundvik, or do you like them kind of by themselves? I actually prefer them by themselves. I really enjoy listening to Move. It's a really uplifting, like Anna said, gospel vibey song, and I think they're definitely a contender to win. A lot of my friends have them as their winner, and uh, I think out of the final, maybe. The Mamas also have quite a big Eurovision potential uh, if they work out the staging, because I thought the staging was quite empty at some points. Hmm. Though I uh, don't think they should add any big probs or something. Just maybe work out the camera shots and the lighting and it would be great. Mm -hmm. I, I think I agree a little bit more with Hannah uh, than, than you about the, the staging because to, to me it works and I would be I would be careful about exactly what you were just saying now Tvon about uh, incorporating props or uh, really uh, complicated lighting because in the case of like Felix Sandman it feels like it's like too much flash for the substance whereas in this case like to me this is pop music gold I, I think that this in, here in Canada if this were, were to be on the radio this would have the potential of doing quite well well 
And if if this was to be the one that wins Melfest, I feel like it would be filling a gap that Eurovision has right now where we don't really have a big anthemic pop song. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that it could do really good. And for all those reasons, this is, this is my absolute favorite of all the songs in Melfest this year. Um, so I guess we'll have to wait and see what, what happens. Um, I know that for some people, the fact that they, they are coming around uh, for the second time, that might uh, make them reluctant to vote for them. But I hope that that's not the case. There's another artist in this mix that could be pulling a repeat as well. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about how they actually prefer this to his previous song in Eurovision. And of course, we're talking about Robin Benson. Um, let's go to you first, Vaughn. How do you feel about his song this year? I'm actually one of those people. I uh, prefer this one to uh, his other song. Um, I wasn't a fan of it at all. And uh, I'm actually enjoying this one. It's easy to listen. It's radio friendly. I don't think it will uh, win. But I think it might get a top five. Might sneak into the top five, but definitely a top eight, I would say. Okay. Uh, Hannah, your thoughts? Yeah, I actually really like this song. Um, I, I liked his uh, previous song in Eurovision as well, uh, 2017. Uh, but I would actually say I prefer this one. Uh, it's a very simple, um, yeah, very radio friendly. Uh, so yeah, I really like it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm also in this this uh, camp of people who uh, prefer this a little bit more to, well, I have to say in my case, I prefer it a lot more to I Can't Go On because <laughs> That one was also in the, the Felix Sandman category of lots of flash and not as much substance for me, at least. <laughs> but I know that a lot of people enjoyed that. And obviously it came fifth at Eurovision. Fifth? Is that right? Mm, yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I definitely like this one a lot more. Um, staging is, is really simple. The, I was actually paying attention to how many times the camera cut. And there aren't that many. There are actually quite a few... Uh, long shots that are steady and you just have the projections on what, what look like curtains. Is is that what you saw at uh, when you went to the semifinal? Are they like curtains in the background? Uh, I unfortunately didn't, didn't see him live, so I don't know. Um, okay. Because so he was That's in the true. first semifinal. I was watching the third one. Right. And I, I guess that uh, there were variations with the, the different stages anyway. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's Robin. So those have been our highlights for Melfest. There are another four songs competing, but we are shooting lots of videos. We can't get to all of them. Uh, I, I think that we've definitely talked about the winner. We could be wrong, so we'll find out on Saturday. Um, but before we do that, Tvon, I know that there are some songs that you liked from this selection that unfortunately didn't make it to the final. So which ones do you want to talk about? Uh, I would say, uh, of course, Malou uh, Ballerina. I think she really deserved to go to at least to the final and maybe even win Malfest because I think it also has a lot of Eurovision potential. And I also absolutely loved Nana Grunwald's Kaupo Karaoke, <laughs> just a big bob. And uh, Frida Earns uh, We Are One. I really enjoyed that one too. And I'm kind of sad. She, I knew she didn't, she wouldn't make it to the final from Andra Juansen, but I just had a little bit of hope that she would. How about you, Hannah? Which songs, uh, are, have there been any disappointments for you? Um, obviously, uh, I have to agree with one on uh, Malo Pritz, um, Ballerina. I was so sad when I uh, realized her and Paul Ray were in the same duel. Because, uh, yeah, you want I wanted both of them to go through, but obviously they're in the same duel, so they couldn't. Um, uh, I also really liked uh, a song uh, called Nobody with uh, Clara Hammerstrom, which was also oh, yeah. in the second semifinal. Uh, I thought that was uh, like dance. I just wanted to dance to that one. That was a real good one. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, another honorable mention, uh, Linda Bang Singh returned again. Um, another schlager bop as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to take one from each of you and say that yeah. <laughs> uh, I definitely agree with, uh, was it Clara that you said? Um, yeah. yeah. So th that was one that uh, I, I would have liked to see in the final. Probably not a winner, but it had some elements that I really liked. And uh, from you, Tvon, I'm going to say uh, Nana. Um, and I don't know if you guys have seen that uh, James Corden has actually talked about her on the show. And and she yeah. actually mentioned it because they interviewed her uh, at uh, Andra Hansen uh, yesterday. Yeah. 
Um, so I, I think I am waiting for the actual carpool karaoke <laughs> yes. with her in there. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so now after this long journey that Melfest is, we're about to find out who the winner will be. Uh, so I want to know from you guys, who do you think is going to be taking the title? Hannah, you go first. Um, so I definitely think it's time for a woman to win this year. Uh, so I'm thinking probably daughter, um, Anna Bergendahl probably could also be a contender, uh, maybe Hannah Parham as well, but probably one of those people. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts, Tuan? I think it will be, be between daughter and Anna Bergendahl. Okay. I, I agree with you guys. I, I still hope that the mamas, uh, could pull, uh, it, it's not a big surprise win, but they would certainly be the ones that I choose. Um, I do understand that there are certain elements going against them, but certainly like daughter would be a great choice and it would be a good, a great choice. Mariette would be a good choice, even though her chances yeah, don't seem to be quite as, as strong. Um, and yeah, so I think Sweden has done pretty well this year and it'll just come down to whoever they choose. Uh, so guys, those have been our thoughts on Melfest. Let us know who you think is going to win and which ones your favorites have been so far. If there are any that didn't make it to the final, please let us know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to Eurovox. Give us a like, reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Our website is Eurovox.net. We're covering Eurovision all the time and the national selections, which are coming to an end now. Uh, but anyway, that's it for now. We'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Bye.